Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. What we're going to have a look at today is the EL6030SC70. So this is a Brava commercial quality Metro leader set. So Brava Metro is the uh, make and model. The function is privacy set. So in this, this will be used for a toilet door or uh, kids room, bedroom door, somewhere where you'd want privacy but want the ability to override that privacy should there ever be an accident or a need to. The door back set is 70mm and I'll explain back set a little bit later on. Suitable for door thicknesses of 35 to 45 millimeters. Okay, so let's open this up. We'll do the unboxing. And some instructions. All right, unboxing is complete. Let's go through and show you what parts are in here and how you use them and how you can put it together on your door, what sizes they are and things like that. All right, once you get past the sticky tape, out they go. Okay, so this is what's called a strike strike box keeper, I believe it is. This goes with this striker plate. If you were mounting it into a wooden frame, you would uh, mount this box in and then mount this striker plate over the top, just giving it a nice finish. This is a protective coating. This striker plate is made out of 2mm stainless plate. It's very strong, it's very good, it's commercial grade. If you're mounting it into a metal frame, you would not need the striker box. You would just mount that using the original two screws that mounts in the striker plate. Nice and easy. Stainless steel latch, once again it's a privacy latch so it doesn't have that secondary dead latching function. What that means is that if there is an emergency you can probably come along with a credit card and just shim that, shim that open. Um, being a privacy latch or passage latch it's low security as where an entrance set would have another little, a little tongue on the side here which would create and make this solid when the latch was in the keeper or striker plate. This is a protective coating on the front, once again it's stainless steel finish underneath. Uh, the screws here you're looking at, I'll go through them, you've basically got two long ones, four medium ones and two very small ones. Two very small gold ones with a button head are used for the mounting. The two big long ones here uh, with the metal thread are used for attaching the lock. The, the four got, uh, silver screws here, they're used for your latch and striker plate. This little tool here, which who knows what the name of it is, this is used to remove your knobs and levers and I'll show you and demonstrate that in a second. You will need to do that to actually get it on the door. So this is the lock itself, this is how it looks. When it's in the locked position, the handle will not go down from the, on the outside. From the inside, when it's in the locked position, you pull it down, the button will pop up and release the knob. So that's fairly straightforward. So if you're on the inside and all the G's is a fire, you've got to run out, just pull the knob. You push it down in the morning, you just grab the thing, releases. If there is an emergency, this lock, this is where this lock um, sort of excels. Because if you had this type of commercial lever set on, let's say, a hotel room, a bathroom or something like that, and somebody's fallen over, or a retirement home, or public toilet or something, wherever you want to put it, and there is an emergency, you simply need to use just a screwdriver, a coin, your nail, or anything. Rotate that front and the button will pop out. Ready? See? So you can use whatever you like uh, to rotate that, a 5 cent piece, 10 cent piece, and that will release the button. The idea behind this is if somebody's in the toilet and they go up to this front handle, they can feel it's locked. Yes, you can undo it if you wanted to, but generally speaking, it's to identify that it's in use and to give the occupancy some privacy. Uh, in the event of emergency, it's nice and easy to get to get back in. This is commercial grade, so um, you know the quality of the build of this type of lock is much more superior than what you're going to find at your hardware shop. You can use it on commercial um, premises, you can use it in houses where you just not want cheap crappy locks. If you want something decent, just put on a, a commercial grade. Okay, I'm using a spike tool here, but this is what this tool is for here. I'm going to simply look through this little circle on the side and see there's a little gold retainer in there. I'm just going to push that in and then pull the the lever up towards me. That will release the lever like so. There's a little black plastic thing that just went flying there, I'll show you that. Then you remove this part here. The diameter of this is 52 mil. You will need a 52 mil hole in your door. You at least also need to know what your latch back set is or your lock back set would be. What you do to do that is you need to measure from the edge of the door to the center of the circle. In this case it's 70 mil. The three sizes that are available are 70 mil, 60 mil and 127 mil. For 127 mil we give you the same latch but we give you a corresponding piece that extends this latch. For the 60 mil we give you a new latch. So they're the three sizes to look out for. They're the most likely what you're going to have the hole on your door, the footprint already cut to. Like, what, uh, like I was saying before, measure from the center of the hole. So you would put your ruler to the center of the hole and measure to your edge of your door. Center hole, edge of door. That's how you find your back set. 
Okay, so now this lock right here, it is adjustable. You can spin this collar forward, you can spin this collar back. It has some teeth that actually dig in when you screw it all together into the wood, so that prevents rotation there as well. To attach this latch here, there's a when you push the latch in, you'll see there's like a T section. That goes into this section here. It's got two little claws facing out. They go into the lock body like so. So to slide, you slide them all in at once. The two teeth on this side are inside the lock like so, locking it in. And then the T section is connected in here. So when I pull the handle back, it pulls the carriage back, which pulls the latch back. Nice and straightforward. So uh, once you've got, once you put your latch in, that's first. You put your lock body onto the door, that's second. You then uh, grab this part right here, and I just pull it apart like so because I've done it a million times. And then you would attach it using those two big uh, metal threaded screws. On the back of this stainless steel plate, you're going to find a little nipple, and you're going to find a corresponding little lunk on the back there. You simply put this over the top like so, line up that back lunk so it's it's over the top, and then push it into place gently so that the spring clip will come out the front. Once you're happy with that, remember that little black plastic piece? Let's just put that back in there. Don't know what it does, but that's where it lives. And then we come back and we slide that knob, sorry, that lever on the back. Using that spike tool, once again, we're gonna push that down out of the way. Well, you have gotta push it down far enough first. It's hard, always harder to do on the bench. Push it down out of the way, and then come through and push your lever down in place. Once it's in place, give it a good, strong, solid, hard pull just to make sure that you've got it clipped in properly and you're good to go. So that is the lock, the way it looks from the front, back and side. Okay, let's look at a few other things now. This plate is adjustable to go in and out. So let's wind it all the way in and let's check the projection of the lever handle. And we are looking at about 65. Let's wind it all the way out and you would be saying probably about 55. So we've got about 10 mil of difference there. This is important if you've got a screen door or something else in front of the door, you might wanna know that. Okay, let's look at the actual design of it here. So this lever, lever right here is about 115 mil from this point to this point. Uh, this little kickoff here is about 40 mil coming in that direction. And I guess that would pretty much cover all the shapes and sizes of this lock. The instructions probably come in a couple of different languages. I've never really taken too much note of it because, you know, I've been doing this for many years. Part number is EL6030SC70. It's available from our lock shop, drlock.com.au. If you've got any questions or comments about this lock, uh, feel free to leave it down in the description. Uh, it's a good quality lock. I would use these around my house all day, every day. I'd even install them for commercial premises or places like that. They're good, strong, quality lock for a reasonable price. You're going to get lots of years out of it and they're they're decent compared to what you normally buy from the hardware you know when you look at locks they all look the same they're all shiny but there is a difference between commercial grade and residential grade and also quality uh quality brands like brava compared with iconic or um lamar things like that uh, brava is always a cut above the reason locksmiths use such a product is because they have to give warranty it has to be reliable has to not jam so when you're talking about parts like this and the internal build quality of that type of lock Locksmiths aren't going to install something that could possibly jam. They always stick with a brand which is built to suit and has a good reliable brand um, sort of brand name or reputation and that's why we all go with Brava or Carbine. They're much of a muchness. Leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching.